Life did not intend to make us perfect. Whoever is perfect belongs in a museum. We are forlorn like children, and experience like old men. We are crude and sorrowful and superficial, I believe we are lost. Keep things at arm's length. If you let anything come too near you want to hold on to it. And there is nothing a man can hold on to. Life is a disease, brother, and death begins already at birth. Every breath, every heartbeat, is a moment of dying, a little shove toward the end. You may turn into an archangel, a fool, or a criminal, no one will see it. But when a button is missing, everyone sees that. I wandered through the streets thinking of all the things I might have said and might have done had I been other than I was. That is the remarkable thing about drinking, it brings people together so quickly, but between night and morning it sets an interval again of years. Sometimes I used to think that one day I should wake up, and all that had been would be over. Forgotten. Sunk. Drowned. Nothing was sure, not even memory. Bombardment, barrage, curtain fire, mines, gas, tanks, machine guns, hand grenades, words, words, but they hold the horror of the world. Modesty and conscientiousness receive their reward only in novels. In life they are exploited and then shoved aside. Never do anything complicated when something simple will serve as well. It's one of the most important secrets of living. They are more to me than life, these voices. They are more than motherliness and more than fear. They are the strongest, most comforting thing there is anywhere. They are the voices of my comrades. At school nobody ever taught us how to light a cigarette in a storm of rain, nor how a fire could be made with wet wood nor that it is best to stick a bayonet in the belly because there it doesn't get jammed, as it does in the ribs. With blinded eyes I stared at the sky, this grey, endless sky of a crazy god, who had made life and death for his amusement. It is too dangerous for me to put these things into words. I am afraid they might then become gigantic and I'd be no longer able to master them. Come let me kiss you. Life was never so precious as today, when it meant so little. I've not much interest in the important things of life. Only in the beautiful things. Just this lilac here makes me happy. Our thoughts are clay, they are molded with the changes of the days, when we are resting they are good, under fire, they are dead. Fields of craters within and without. Then when I am sad and understand nothing anymore, I say to myself that it's better to die while you still want to live, than to die and want to die. For us lads of 18 they ought to have been mediators and guides to the world of maturity, the world of work, of duty, of culture, of progress, to the future. The idea of authority, which they represented, was associated in our minds with a greater insight and a more humane wisdom. Regret is the most useless thing in the world. One cannot recall anything. And one cannot rectify anything. Otherwise we would all be saints. Life did not intend to make us perfect. Whoever is perfect belongs in a museum. I, too, am going to go away soon, she says, I am weary and weary of my weariness. Everything is beginning to be a little empty and full of leave-taking and melancholy and waiting. We know only that in some strange and melancholy way we have become a wasteland. All the same, we are not often sad. We had suddenly learned to see. And we saw that there was nothing of their world left. 
We were all at once terribly alone, and alone we must see it through. But what I would like to know, says Albert, is whether there would not have been a war if the Kaiser had said no. Well, if not in Malone, then perhaps if 20 or 30 people in the world had said no. That I don't know, I say, but whichever way it is there's war all the same and every month more countries coming in.